I'm Thomas Baldrick at ATS in Denver, Colorado. Happy to have with me Dr. Arie Fisher. He is Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Rheumatology at National Jewish Health and the University of Colorado. Thanks for stopping by. So what is it like having a major conference like this in your hometown? Good, bad, indifferent? Well, I'm a big fan of Denver, so it's nice to be able to showcase Denver. My wife is in commercial real estate, so this is maybe good for her world and showcasing our town to the community. It's a little complicated, juggling home, work, that life balance. Uh, bottom line is ATS is always a good conference, so I'm enjoying it. Very good. Let's talk about uh, your contributions here. You chaired a session on connective tissue-related interstitial lung disease. What were the highlights of this session? couple of highlights. Uh, so we had a, a nice group of presenters discuss a few different topics. We talked about the evaluation and the distinction between connective tissue disease, ILD, and idiopathic forms. So highlighting the differences in those patient populations. We had high yield impact talks on scleroderma, myositis, rheumatoid arthritis. And on a personal level, perhaps most exciting, we were able to unveil a new classification called interstitial pneumonia with autoimmune features. This is an endorsement, uh, or rather a classification that's being endorsed by the European Respiratory Society and the American Thoracic Society. To be able to classify, define, and perhaps hopefully study a novel group of interstitial pneumonia patients that have autoimmune features. They look like they have a connective tissue disease. We're not 100% sure. They have an autoimmune background. And this is a, a task force I've been fortunate to chair for a couple of years now. And so we just had our paper accepted at European Respiratory Journal. And today was the first announcement actually of its findings. So very personally fulfilling. Other topics we talked about were the management strategies of connective tissue disease related interstitial lung disease, how to, in, how to understand the interrelationships between pulmonary hypertension and interstitial lung disease. And then we ended the session with a talk about the transplants and how we think about lung transplantation in connective tissue disease related interstitial lung disease. So let me take you back to the task force. How will that work and what are its goals going forward? So this was a task force that has been working for two years now. Uh, it's under the umbrella of the European Respiratory Society and American Thoracic Society, multidisciplinary international group of CTD ILD experts, rheumatologists, pulmonologists, radiology, and pathology all represented. And we've come up with a position statement, and it's a research statement whereby we're trying to unify uh, a diverse group of patients into a more uniform criteria for the purposes of future study. Presently, there is not a great understanding about what these autoimmune interstitial lung disease patients look like. Some are really straightforward. They have rheumatoid, they have scleroderma, but then there are, there are a lot of patients out there that have an interstitial pneumonia that have an autoimmune feel, an autoimmune flavor. They look autoimmune, but yet they don't really meet existing criteria. So the exciting part is to be able to have a more uniform, multidisciplinary derived consensus about this group of patients. And there have been a few terms used, undifferentiated connective tissue disease, lung dominant connective tissue disease, autoimmune featured interstitial lung disease, each with their own sets of criteria, each derived by different institutions and groups of investigators. So for the first time, we will now have sort of a much more standard approach to what these patients look like, and so we can study them. How do you treat them? How do they behave? Uh, what's their natural history? Seems like it has a lot of benefits. So is there effective treatment for CTILD patients, and how do you utilize some of these recently approved therapies? So the recently approved therapies, perfenidone, nintedanib, the antifibrotics that were approved for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, are not for connective tissue disease, interstitial lung disease. They are for patients who have, by definition, no connective tissue disease. They're really restricted to those patients who have an idiopathic form of usual interstitial pneumonia, clinically IPF. So from the standpoint of those antifibrotics in today's armamentarium for how we manage interstitial lung disease, they're restricted to IPF and not to be used in connective tissue disease related interstitial lung disease. For the CTD ILDs, for those groups of patients, we have few control trials, not a lot of data, 
mostly in scleroderma. Uh, but we do use immunosuppression, and we do it with experience more than true evidence-based. And that's always a tricky conversation. So uh, right now, we are left to expert opinion. This is what I've done. This is what's worked. But we don't have controlled data outside of scleroderma interstitial lung disease. Thank you, Dr. Fisher, for stopping by and sharing your expert opinions. We appreciate it. Thank you.